Our next guest is going to be Secretary Tong. Do we have her present here? Hi, good morning, I'm here. Good morning. Let me uh, introduce you to our audience, uh, Secretary uh, Tong. Uh, again, my name is Bobby Dada. I'm the SDAC co-chair. And uh, I'm gonna introduce you to the rest of us who's not familiar with you, or maybe they are. You're very famous. <laughs> uh, well, Governor uh, Gavin Newsom recently appointed the Office of Digital Innovation Director Amy Tong to serve as the Secretary of California Gov Operation and said, he said, a veteran of state service, Director Tong's deep experience in the public sector and leadership in the technology field have helped guide key efforts to make government more efficient and effective, including our work to bridge the digital divide and help state agencies navigate complex challenges during the pandemic. With her keen focus on creating a culture of innovation, commitment to public service and proven track record, Director Tong's leadership is crucial to continue implementing our vision for bringing the government technology into the 21st century with more accessible, responsive service to meet the needs of California. Uh, Amy Tong's been director at the California Office of Digital Innovation since 2022. She was a director at the California Department of Technology from 2016 to 2021. Amy Tong was a chief director at the Office of System Integration Agency Chief Information Officer at the Health and Human Services Agency. She has done a lot, needless to say. She was a chief technology officer at the Department of Tax and Fee Administration, chief of the data center at the California Public Retirement System. I can go on the whole interview, probably gonna take all the accomplishment that Secretary Tong has listed, but I'm gonna end it by saying she earned a Master of Business Administration degree from California State University, Sacramento. So without further ado, Secretary Tong, the floor is yours. Thank you for that. My goodness, Bobby, I, I was going to give you a signal to say, all right, well, I'm, I, all the jobs that I carry is probably going to be scary. Um, somebody actually teased me, is that just because you can't hold a job long enough? <laughs> um, no, but, but kidding aside, um, thank you for inviting me to be here. And good morning, everyone. Um, and again, just it's my pleasure to have been invited to speak to the committee today and see your names and faces on Zoom. Um, I am aware of the uh, important role that you all play advising state leaders about the value that people with disabilities bring into the state workforce, as well as your feedback and the suggestions on the ways that you need, um, that all we need, I should say, to support and encourage other individuals with disabilities to join the state workforce and thrive. I'd like to start by sharing a little bit about myself. Um, also, I touch a little bit on my vision in my new role as the Government Operations Secretary, and then ask for your help with an important project underway at agency. Um, over my career, I have spent more than 25 years in six state organizations, as uh, Bobby has alluded to, including serving as the state's Chief Information Officer and Director of California Department of Technology. And currently, I am still the Acting Director for Office of uh, Digital Innovation. I am particularly proud that as a Director of the Department of Technology, we have been able to uh, tap into the power of technology to make government more accessible to people with disabilities. One example of that is the work that the department did following the enactment of Assembly Bill 434. That was a, a couple of years ago. Um, uh, I hopefully uh, is still uh, uh, fresh in people's mind, um, which requires website and their content to comply with the web content accessibility guideline. CDT and the Department of Rehab released the optical character recognition bot. It was 
you know, quite events uh, back in December of 2019 as a one of the original artificial intelligent tool that processed more than 500,000 documents, averaging 8.6 page each. The results was more than 4 million documents with an average remediation time of 20 seconds per page compared to five minutes per page that, that would have been required by a human remediators. And that was a huge effort as the state was, you know, taking serious and very committed steps to make sure that all information that are published out there are accessible. And this is just one example, of course, as it's exciting to me that we can put this technology to work to help make sure the government serves everyone. In February, Governor Newsom appointed me as the Secretary of Government Operations, a new role that gives me a broader responsibility for helping uh, support and oversee the workforce, including supporting the operation of more than 150 departments statewide and control agencies. Um, that includes CalHR, Department of Technology, and Department of General Services. This is an exciting time to be leading the state. And we have lived through, you know, as we all have lived through this early stages of pandemic, a time that was challenging for all of us as half of the state workforce migrated almost overnight to a work, a remote work environment and needed equipment and technology to be successful. As the state CIO, I was called upon by Governor Newsom to help share up technology in departments across the states. We conducted more than 75 um, emergency procurements, built more than 40 technology tools, and made urgent critical repairs to legacy system that work that, typ that, that work typically would have taken state more than a decade to do. The COVID-19, that CA.gov website, itself was something extraordinary that the state did to make near real-time information available to all Californians. Almost as soon as major decisions were made and guidelines were being given on lockdown orders, closures, PPE, mask, all those information are immediately reflected. In the early part of the pandemic, it got more than 100 million views, which was just you know simply extraordinary. It shows us the new way of communicating with people in California during a crisis. Through the experience of COVID, we are learning to become more comfortable moving with an accelerated pace and adjusting along the way. I have become more comfortable taking risk, intelligent risk or conscious risk because there's a lot of transparency involved. We are you know, sharing the journey that we are on, the complexity of what we're doing so that we can change from being a risk averse culture to one that embraces innovation and change. The challenge for all of us is keeping up with the changes and constantly assessing where technology can enhance the life of people we serve. And at the same time, keeping in mind, there are barriers that we need to overcome. We are living through enormous changes as we migrate more and more to digital world, working remotely, using new tools, communicate, you know, and, and accomplishing people's business. For some, this transition has been an equalizing force as they interact almost entirely with one another using digital tools. For other, this has been uncomfortable and introduced new difficulties that challenge all of us to be creative and supportive. The speed of innovation is challenging all of us and government, as government leaders to keep up and to know what is possible and learn how to innovate faster. At the same time, we really must maintain focus on people, on supporting them to do the work through this work and changes that impact so many parts of our society. I want you to know that Governor Newsom believed passionately in the idea of California for all. He urges all of us to remember everyone we serve and work hard to bring services to all individuals, every single individuals that we can because we need them. That has special meaning for me as an immigrant and as an Asian American woman who has sometimes find myself feeling like an outsider. 
The governor is committed to make all of us feel included. We have a good deal of work ahead of us to get hiring, retention, and recruitment where it needs to be for the people of California, including people with disabilities in the state workforce now, and those wanted to welcome that we want to welcome in years ahead. We are focused on building a diverse workforce and for the future, and it needs to look more like the people of state, of our state. We need to integrate the power of technology in state operations. We need to use data in operations so we can see problem clearly, embrace risk and change, and design solutions that are tested in events with three or people from all walks of life. So we know and they know that we are here to make sure their needs are met. As you may know, I'm still serving as the director of, of ODI, as I mentioned earlier. And our vision is that the office will coach departments, teams at all state departments to do user testing so that their website and the tools become more service oriented, all the while working with employees like you who can contribute to the solution and then work for all. I have, you know, said it many times before, and you're going to continue to hear from me that you have my commitment that I focus on hiring, retaining, and promoting people with disabilities within the state workforce will be part of the discussion about the significant transformation that would occur in years to come ahead. So thank you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to address you all. Bobby. Thank you, Secretary uh, Tong. That was very nice to hear that you support the significance of having persons with disabilities within state service. A uh, couple of things that I found it uh, quite interesting. You mentioned that you use this OCR supported by AI uh, to do this remedial work. Now, is this tool available to all agencies? Because I know many pull documents from their website because it didn't comply with the accessibility regulations, including my very own, the one I work for, uh, and CalHR for that matter. Uh, so is that tool going to be made accessible uh, and use it as a mandate for, for that matter to make the accessibility a reality and not just uh, a thing that we need to do because we need to comply with the regulation. Uh, do you have any? Yes, um, the, the tool is in fact uh, available and at no cost to any state entity that would like to use it. And in fact, all of that information is uh, provided on the DOR website. And there were, uh, at the beginning of this, back in 2019 or, or and then I, I don't know the frequency of the user forum, you know, in the year of 2020 because of COVID and also 2021, but I know there were uh, quite a bit of, um, they call it um, a user, uh, uh, yeah, user forum. It's, it's folks that use this tool to come share their experience and it's being hosted by DOR and uh, co-sponsored by Department of Technology at the time, just to make sure that all of those services are provided to departments that are really having, um, you know, going through this uh, 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 focus on making their things accessible. And did you say it's available on DOR website, Department of Rehab? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you Absolutely. very much. That's, that's very useful information. There are two concerns we have as state workers with persons with disabilities. One is the disability parity rate, which is the percentage of employee that each entity must have should be at least 16.6% .6 of the total workforce. Many of the entities uh, and many of the departments struggle to meet that. Some have done a really good job, including the speaker that was ahead of us, per, uh, you know, they, their parity rate is 21.1. What is your plan to increase that parity rate? And two, there's a leap list that entities can ask when they're recruiting people. And there's a government code, if I remember, or California Code of Regulation that Kelly Char can tell us about that gives you the authority to use exclusive leap list when you interview people uh, for the job. 
And are there any plans to utilize these tools to increase disability parity rate in all state departments? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, Bobby. Um, I'd, I would be remiss if I said that I already have all this plan, you know, crafted after six weeks on the job. But um, as I reiterate it, right, this is something that we're all very much passionate about. And uh, perhaps in the, sometime in the future that we could circle back and come visit this group if this group were at me. And we can talk more about our plan to do that because as you mentioned, um, this is a, a goal that we have to all take part to reach. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just a goal that sits on the shelf, you know, to look good, which is, which is not good enough. And, you know, it, and, and even for those departments that have reached a goal, not only we should learn from them, there's always good, um, uh, uh, it's a good move to strive to do even more. And I think that's the uh, attitude that I'm bringing to this job. And I'm really wanting to have an opportunity after I get my sea leg in, so to speak, um, to continue to visit with you all to get ideas on how do we develop this plan. We would love to have you come back and tell us about it because I understand you're just new at this job. But knowing all your accomplishment, I'm, I have no doubt that you can easily catch up and make this thing happen and deal with the issues that we express concern about. My final question to you is, there's a reasonable accommodation seems to be a big obstacle for many doing the job and getting the job and moving forward. I understand Kelly Char is in a process of drafting a reasonable accommodation model policy. Uh, is there any discussion or would you look into it if there is a way that we can at least say that the interactive process within reasonable accommodation must start immediately or within you know, X number of days, maybe five days. Is that a doable thing? I, I think that's a very reasonable ask. And that's something I, uh, I'm gonna take a note and then and, and talk to CalHR when I have a chance to visit with Director Ortiga. And I would even add that um, with, uh, there's so much discussion about the telework or hybrid telework environment of how we're gonna set up our work environment going forward. We do also need to be mindful if the telework environment, it's gonna be something here to stay, right? What that whole process looks like with the mind of reasonable accommodation and how do we start that conversation early in, a, in a, taking consideration all of that um, it's, it's something that we definitely have to consider. I think, I think I'll, I'll just wrap by saying that we are in the new world in terms of what our workforce you know, will be, how we work, where we work. And this is, um, some say it is exciting time, some say this is unsettling time, and I said it's all of above. Um, we get to charter our new um, way of um, conducting business moving forward. Thank you, uh, Secretary Tong. We look forward to your culture of uh, replacing risk averse culture within state government with intelligent risk taking as you describe. And I'm mindful of the fact that you're kind of limited on time. So I'm gonna say goodbye to you and invite you to come back and please uh, share any information that's gonna be helpful to the employees with disabilities within state service. So thank you again for the ending presentation. Thank you. And I will, I saw a couple of chat about the link to it. Um, I'll, I'll send it to you, Bobby, later on, on DOR website. And if you guys do look for it, it's under AB 434. There's an entire two sets. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.